As the world continues to open up for vaccinated Australians, we're still contending with more cruise cancellations on home turf. Is there an end in sight? I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. As always, thank you for subscribing to my channel. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. In another blow to the local cruising industry, p has canceled next year's scheduled departures from Cairns, Adelaide and Fremantle. Amid continuing state border issues and the broader matter of cruising still being on the banned activities list, p determined that cancellation was the only course of action. Home port seasons for all three cities won't return until 2023, but p Australia President Stur Mermel said that the line remains committed to serving these cities in the future. The latest round of cancellations did not affect scheduled departures from Sydney or Brisbane, with both cities expecting to see cruising from mid-February. We are at a tipping point, however, with only three months until those scheduled departures, p will likely be forced to cancel more of their scheduled departures if the Australian government doesn't revoke its ban on cruising soon. The current prohibition on cruising ends on December 17th unless revoked earlier or extended. To that end, overnight Carnival Australia announced the further suspension of its cruises on board the Australian-based Splendour and Spirit. All cruises on board Carnival Splendour through to and including March 4th have been cancelled, and all cruises on board Carnival Spirit through to and including March 6th have also been cancelled. This announcement is yet another example of the Australian government's inability to commit to the local cruising industry, having a prolonged and devastating effect on the thousands of people that have come to rely on the industry for their way of life. At the same time of making this announcement, Carnival confirmed that their entire US-based fleet will be operational by the end of March. Which, although fantastic news, is a bit of a hard pill to swallow for local cruising fanatics and those of us invested in the cruise industry here. Even when the Australian federal government lifts its ban on cruising, it will be up to individual states to manage the return of cruising within their local jurisdictions. New South Wales and Victoria are the state's best place to engage with the cruise industry first. New South Wales having led the charge to opening up the country and now sporting a full vaccination rate for people 16 years and older of over 90%. Nationally, Australia has surpassed an average vaccination rate for the same age group of over 80%, which has triggered the final two phases of Australia's four-phase national roadmap out of this hell, a pandemic. No, hell. So with Aussies now jetting off overseas, the lunacy of the continuing ban on cruising from Australia is extra damning. Earlier this week, a meeting between key industry players was set to take place in Sydney, with the cruise passenger publication reporting that many members of the state government are fully supportive of a cruising restart. It was reported that Paul Nicolau, Business Sydney Executive, was instrumental in establishing talks between the state government and business. Mr Nicolau said, I understand that the New South Wales government has set up a group within the Premier and Cabinet Department, which includes Steve Cox from Destination New South Wales, someone from Health and a few others to coordinate the way forward once the federal government gives the green light. However, it was also reported that New South Wales Health Minister Brad Hazard remains overly cautious about the resumption of cruising after his department's complete and utter failure to properly manage the Ruby Princess issue in 2020. This all leads me to believe that the resumption of cruising in Australia has more to do with political egos and careers than it does facts. Welcome to politics. On a lighter note, Princess have announced their 2024 World Cruise, which will set sail on board Ireland Princess from both Fort Lauderdale and Los Angeles. The 111 night voyage will cross the equator twice, visit 25 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, including the Acropolis in Greece, and as an added perk, anyone that books by January 31 will receive the Premier Beverage Package, unlimited Wi-Fi, included gratuities, $500 on board credit and four nights of specialty dining. Plus, residents of the US will receive free return flights to either Los Angeles or Miami. Details of the Australian originating world cruise are yet to be released, but information should be coming out in early December as part of the 2023-2024 itinerary release. Well, that's about it for this week's cruise news update. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you are looking at booking a cruise from 2022 and beyond, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguy.com.au and you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks for watching, stay safe and I'll see you soon. In another blow to the local cruising industry, p has cancelled all of its next year's noop. In another blow to the local cruising industry, p has cancelled next year's scheduled departures from Cairns... 
Home port seasons for all three cities won't return until 20... Home port seasons for all three cities won't return until 2023, but President... Nope. With both East Coast cities still set for cruise departures in mid-February. From mid-February.